whole family is Russian? Yes! That, that happens. Sometimes Russians exist, and sometimes they come to America. And then everyone thinks for the next 3,000 years that we were communists. But wait, <laughs> did, did your... Like, how... Did you just... What channel was the Soviet television on, though? There was, like, one channel on the Russian side. And then for us, it was a... My dad would either, like, find it, like, somewhat illicitly on the internet, or we would buy, like, a box set of uh, DVDs, and it would be there. Yeah, like, you you had to find that stuff. That was not just on TV. Okay, that that makes sense. Think it out. That's crazy. I want a Soviet TV channel, though. That sounds fun. That, I mean, it sounds very interesting. I mean, more interesting than some of the stuff that's on the television nowadays. Mm, I don't even watch TV. I'm like, I will occasionally like pop in on Netflix and because I'm a little baby on Disney Plus. Hey, I mean, there's not just baby (laughs) shit on Disney Plus. I watched Hamilton like five times on there, man. (laughs) Okay, but when I got Disney Plus, the first thing I did was watch my favorite episodes of Hannah Montana and Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Oh my god, I (sighs) watched Hannah Montana. Like I was just like, this, this is what I got it for. Oh, I used to be obsessed. Yeah, I, that used to be the shit that I'd throw on in the background because I'd like already seen every episode like three times. So I would just, oh, yeah. it would help me fall asleep because I could just not pay attention to it. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm thinking was Gravity Falls part of that whole selection because I think it was. Yes, yeah. it was. I was just going to say that I recently rewatched all of Gravity Falls, and that shit was great. Oh, yeah. I actually haven't seen all of it, just because of the fact that I watched it all, like, here and there on TV, and then when I went to go watch it myself, I just I couldn't figure out where I left off, so I just never got around to it. I uh, always had to, like, rewatch it from scratch every time I did that. Yeah, I guess I just wasn't patient enough at the time. Shame on me. Now's the time to change. And You're right. Become obsessed with watching TV. Oh <laughs> man, I haven't actually watched a television show by myself in like two years. I don't know. It feels like it's maybe okay. Maybe it's just 2020, but like it feels like it's been two to three years since I've just watched a show with myself. Dang. I don't know. I just. I mean, if I'm ever by myself, I'm usually I've got some. I've got shit to do, or I want to play video games with my friends. You know? I see. The video games is what is what makes me understand now. That's yeah. <laughs> well, I just have too many games like Spelunky and Hades and all these other things that you can just play an infinite amount of too. So it's just just too many time sinks that to, that I can give myself to. Because I mean, you know, it's it's easy to like and like watch YouTube on the side. I get that. It's just with a show. I just I feel like it just it, I need to give more attention to it, or else I'm not gonna know what's going on. That's fair. Sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> it's all good. Uh, I don't know. I don't play many video games. I am in a whole like streaming group with a bunch of people who play lots of video games, and I'm like the one person that does not play video games. Hey, so I'm... for me, really? I'm always watching TV and I'm always watching movies, or like most of the time, I'm drawing at this point in my life. Hey, you know, I probably never got into drawing because I didn't give enough time to it uh, vis-a-vis video games. So I get it. It do- <laughs> it takes up a lot of time, and honestly, like, funny enough, recording recording this podcast where I sometimes talk about video games cuts quite a lot into my free time for doing that as well. But you know, I think what's important is having a good balance if that's something you're into, and also like I just play them so much. I'm I feel like I'm just shooting myself in the foot by like not streaming all the time now. Like, why Why am I not? I might as well, like, make use of my time. I don't I mean, know. Maybe that's a new venue to explore. Oh, yeah. I mean, Constant streaming. I, I've been trying, uh, trying to get it set up, but I just don't have any of the customation stuff done yet. Editing Mason here? I have an idea. I'm working on it. It's just like, uh, it's, it, it's, it's tough whenever you're doing your first design run through of something, because you don't... I mean, you can look off of other people's stuff, but I I think I worry a lot about creating something unique and it causes me to just stall out on getting it done instead of actually doing it. I completely relate. I'm not the kind of person that wants to like put out the same thing twice. As it stands, most of my limited success has been by putting out the same thing like seven different times. Hey, I mean... (laughs) 
we all have to play the game in some way, you know? Um, I mean, for me, it's like, okay, hold on. How, how to best describe this? So I go to college. I'm a college student. And when I'm not being responsible as a college student, I'm being irresponsible as a college student. And one of my legal venues for doing this is working in the satire magazine on campus and just like drawing just the worst shit ever. Hell yeah. Just the worst. I was drawing like really buff squirrels and like fake coupons for uh, the school cafeteria that was like, uh, get a free bunch of mold with every purchase. Fuck yeah. Like shit like that. Free mold. Free mold. Gotta love free mold. Small Uh, metal shavings. (laughs) That sounds like a hell of a lot of fun. I mean, Aubrey and I kind of do that. We do a radio show that we Ooh. totally haven't done in all this semester. Um, <laughs> where we kind of just go on and shit post music for, for about an hour and a half. Yeah. That's the best thing, though. Shit posting is the best thing. Yeah, like... well, we, we do shit post some, but it's it's mostly EDM from Aubrey. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Which, uh, hey, that. That brings me into my first topic. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, wait. Hey, should we introduce our guest first? <laughs> oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> as great as a segue is, hello! Welcome to the studio. Kristen. She Hi. is part of the uh, Wiener Nova conglomeration, H-Man WP, that groupie old pals. We, we've, had, we've had them in here a few times uh, a little while back, a, couple, a month or so ago. And uh, now you're stuck with me. Oh, that's not the right <laughs> verb. Well, we actually, I was, I was really, um, I, I have to like, thank you for being able to make it here on such short notice. I, I don't know, like getting to know the rest of your, your group some more, like it's been great to get to know everybody. And I, Aubrey, I feel like, uh, shares the same sentiment. We, uh, I think yeah, we I both think, wanted to get to know you better. Yeah. I think we just click with you maybe better and that's not like a bad thing i don't mean that in a bad way just like you know i'm literally so honored but also like when they see this podcast i'm gonna get fucking dogpiled no but to be fair <laughs> no, i will we, say the guess have been it had so to far. do with your drawings and what you were willing ah. to draw and i was like okay i like this <laughs> yeah i mean i mean my first impression of you was strappy do so i mean we had to i knew oh. then we had to get you on the podcast <laughs> oh yeah Oh god. I wish I could remember why exactly Strappy Doo came up. Um hmm. <laughs> I think somebody we were talking about Scrappy Doo and somebody said, Did you say Strappy Doo? And <laughs> oh I was god. like, you know, that just sounds like Scrappy Doo with a strap on. <laughs> and we just continue about our conversation and then Christy drops this lovely drawing of exactly what I just said in the chat. The strap on that. bigger than Strappy himself. It was incredible. Yes. Warner Brothers, knew. please don't sue. Well, Warner Brothers, honored. please buy our idea from us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from honored her. to be able to blackmail Warner Brothers. Aren't we all? <laughs> Dude, isn't... <laughs> yeah, Aubrey was ranting to me earlier. Isn't it crazy that they are uh, about to put all of their movies from the next year on HBO? Like, on the streaming service? I mean, they fucking better. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, like, I that, that was my thought too. Is I was like, I mean, I am down with this. <laughs> I am completely okay with that happening. But also, wow, that's a big move. That's a big money move. I I, I guess what I'm curious to see is how long it's going to take for other people to uh to follow suit. I guess. Yeah, yeah, I still haven't been convinced to get HBO Max for like any reason. Even though they keep trying to convince me, it's been like well. <laughs> we they're gonna have to get it. they're gonna have the second space jam at some point next year so oh god well for maybe, space jam well for well for jabron lames maybe jabron <laughs> lames oh man the forbidden player that's, <laughs> forbidden. I, I think that's one of my favorite reoccurring jokes that happens in the office is just daryl fucking with the white people in the office because he can He's like, oh, you're going to say something about a black person? Now you have it wrong. And immediately everyone just diverts to what he said. And they're like, yep, this is the truth. And I'm like, oh, my God, you're all fucking idiots. Oh. And one of those was somebody goes, I'm going to make you look like LeBron James. And he goes, it's LeJohn Brames. <laughs> He's like, I'm sorry. Yeah, LeJohn Brames. Oh. I don't know. I'm, I'm as pasty as it gets, but I, I do fucking love it when people just take the piss 
out of people who are not used to having the piss taken out of them. That is just character building for me. I mean, I think we, I think everybody needs a shot to their ego at some point. It's, it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's good. It's good for the health, good for the mind, good for the body. The more the merrier. The body and the soul. Um, <laughs> so, uh, hey, what was that topic, Aubrey? <laughs> oh, yeah. So my topic. Uh, I wanted to talk about music gaming. Mm. Music uh, gaming. Because this is something that was really big over my childhood, um, being a, you know, preteen in, like, the 2000s, really, uh... Aubrey, were you a gamer? <laughs> I mean, no. I was in my early gamer stages, uh, with my Nintendo DS Lite and such like that. But one year, my uncle bought himself an Xbox 360. Uh, and, of course, when he got Xbox, we all said, well, what does Uncle Michael need? Because he's, he's in a band, so he really likes music. And we were like, let's buy him literally every version of Guitar Hero that will ever exist for the next 10 years. Um, and he, I'm sure to, to, to this day, owns all of them still. Um, <laughs> And still probably plays them. Uh, we also bought him the rock band Beatles set because he Ooh. loves the Beatles, but they didn't have that in Guitar Hero. So we had to buy him a whole different set for that. Wow. Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a lot. But that was always one of my favorite things about going over there was getting to play Guitar Hero. And I was thinking to myself the other day, what happened to Guitar Hero? Like, what, what happened to that? Because, that, oh. I mean, everybody loved Guitar Hero. Don't tell me that you didn't love Guitar Hero. We all liked it. it was I fun. actually was a rock band house, but I liked Guitar <laughs> same, Hero. Same difference, you know. And then after Guitar Hero and rock band came, like, what, DJ Hero? and Oh, other yeah, iterations. I had DJ Hero too. Hit that shit up. I, I, I <laughs> bought it, played the fucking campaign of that shit uh, so fast, and then just put it down. Yeah, I, I, I got my ga- got, I got my DJ gamer fill. I got the last Guitar Hero they ever made, where they had three top white keys and three bottom white keys, which really like changed up the style of the like how the game was played. But I liked it; it was still good. Um, but eventually, like the game died because they had a uh, like this basically online version where people could go play against each other while they would play classic music videos, like VH1 does, you know. Nice. And that was super cool. You could just go in at any time and go to one of the channels. But then, obviously, the game died, so they stopped doing that. And it made the game kind of literally nothing. Cool, now you can play the 30 songs you got with the game. And yeah. that's it. The pinnacle of my music, music-based music gaming had to be whenever I got the expansion pack for... I think, you know, I think it was just Rock Band 3. Uh, and it came with a key, a key guitar and i played the shit out of that key guitar um and i was good at it and not not just because it was an easier version of the guitar but also because i was good shut up editing mason here fucking nerd (laughs) well i also I, i had this friend and we would go spend the night at her house sometimes and her brother would have a friend over too and her brother's friend could play guitar hero on super hard with a fedora over his face. I like, assume he had he, some of these songs so memorized that he literally, I remember us sticking this fedora on the front of his face, being like, there's no fucking way this kid is about to play everything correctly. And he absolutely did. And I just remember being floored. I'm going to assume that any other hat, it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> I'm Yeah, I mean, you never know. There's too many perforations in other hats, but fedoras... Good strong hats. No, I'm just saying, like he. That's just his lucky hat. So like, <laughs> his lucky guitar hero. No, hat. no, it's just any fedora. It just it works out for him. Any other hat, it's just it doesn't work. He fucks up. <laughs> it's a muscle memory thing. Jeez, I do remember like everyone was obsessed with this kind of like play on the little plastic instruments type of shit, like, match the fucking Dance Dance Revolution dots to the music sort of thing. Oh, yeah, and I feel like Dance Dance Revolution was almost, I mean, it was the music gaming before that, and it, that one stuck. Like, I still could get down with some Dance Dance Revolution if it's, like, the in-person machines. I'm not really about the mat at my mm-hmm. house, um, Dude, but I would, mat- when I'm rich, I do want to own a machine, because my sister and I went to the Dominican Republic for family vacation one summer. Hmm. And uh, they had an arcade in the hard rock resort that we stayed at. 
And my sister oh, nice. and I would go there every day and play this Dance Dance Revolution machine. And we got so good that the other children would just crowd around and watch us. Yo. <laughs> and I, I've never felt so good at something in my life. I used to since. do that with <laughs> Time Crisis. The, oh my god. The, like the, the two-player co-op shoot 'em up game. Yeah. I don't know why. We were just always obsessed with like any iteration of that one. I guess, I don't know. I guess it's because I just, I like multiplayer stuff, okay? I like co-op. And that was like <laughs> the only co-op arcade game in the machine. And fuck. <laughs> it, you know, it, it's just every other thing. I mean, like, I don't want to race people. Like, God, I hate racing games. I'm bad at them. And like, which is, is it weird that I'm really bad at racing anything, but then like, I feel like I'm a really, really good driver? See, I used to be really bad at Mario Kart as a kid, but it just made me want to get really good as an adult, um, which I did actually have a huge fight with one of my boyfriends years ago over Mario Kart. Like, it was the first huge fight we ever had, and it was over fucking Mario Kart. Love that. And it wasn't even about, like, winning or losing. He was just, like, trying to tell me how to drift right or whatever. And I was like, could you shut the fuck up? Like, just let me play the game how I want to play the fucking game. And he was like, I'm just trying to make you better. You don't have to be such a bitch. And everybody in the room went, oh, God. And I said, what? <laughs> yeah. And that's the end of that story. Yeah. And that relationship. It didn't end there, but that should have been have. fine. <laughs> should have. Should have ended it right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, so if anybody's looking to buy any rock band guitars, I have some of those. How many, though? Four. Oh my 17. god. 17. <laughs> uh, okay, probably only three. I think one of them may be broken. That's why we have the fourth. Three and a half. Three and a half. I guess if you want to break down one of them for parts. Oh, God. Well, but uh, speaking of music gaming and how it kind of just, like, died, mm. uh, there's a new music game, which I actually just played a little bit of it. Yeah, um, she showed us. Yes, it's she called... Sure showed us. And and this is and let me start this off. I am in no way sponsored by these people. I had to buy the game. It was well, somebody bought it for me as a gift. But Ooh. like, I'm not sponsored. But this game fucking slaps, and it reminds me of the days of like Guitar Hero and Rock Band, and how amazing and cool those were when they came out. Is this is kind of the new version of that? Basically, you do the whole EDM DJ. Thing, like you're at a rave or a music festival which is also cool because i'm a person that loves music festivals and i can't go to those in the foreseeable future or Yeet. at all currently so it's nice to vicariously live through this video game and feel like i am in the middle of a rave i can just get fucked up behind my own computer jamming out to all star mashed <laughs> up with bad guy yeah. The, I mean, I feel like that's we could all use that this very, very cold winter. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it also has, like, multiplayer settings to it, I believe, and some other things. I highly recommend checking it out. There's not much more I can say about it than that. It, it You just mash up a bunch of music, and it's ridiculously fun. You ever Simple feel like concept? being your own Neil Ciceriga? That's not I how mean, you hey. say his name. You ever feel like being your own David Guetta? You ever feel like doing a mishy mash or a mix up? A Be your mash. own Dead Mal Five. That's how you say it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can attest that shit was fun to watch and listen to. Just it made me think about music gaming today and all that music gaming has gone through over the years. Nice. Uh. <laughs> uh. So, what are we? What are we? What are? What are we talking about? <laughs> Kristen. Did you um did you did you have something that you wanted to uh bring up today? Oh, shit. Well, I, I'm not I'm not oh, drunk enough for this yet. But. Oh, oh no. It it it's I completely understand like I said, uh, usually our guests don't. I just wanted to ask before I jumped right into mine. Um Oh well, hell. I don't know. You say yours. I'll see if I come up with something. Okay. If I drink enough to come up with something. Mine's usually more of a collaborative there effort you go. anyway. So, you know what? I just wanted to talk about a phenomena that I don't feel like I've seen in a while, sadly. And I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just because I have been inside this entire year so far. But you know what I haven't seen in a while? 
What? M- motherfucking rainbow, guys. You want to talk about rainbows? Rainbow. Oh, look, it's a double rainbow. Yeah. Whoa. So intense. So, <laughs> rainbows. Well, that sounds guys... kind of gay. Yeah. Do you guys know how rainbows work? Um, Because no. me neither. I, I only know what they tell you in Sunday school about rainbows. They tell you things? I mean... You don't know that? Uh... You're not familiar with the whole, like... Noah in the art. Okay, well, I'm only going to say this. Oh, wait. No, you're right. No, I remember. Funny. Okay. When I Noah gets remember. out of the ark, God sends the rainbow as a representation that he will never flood the entire earth again. Oh, Aww. yeah. Right after he does that, you know what Noah does? Because he's just a great human with free will who's been trapped indoors in a boat for uh, months. He goes mm-hmm. out, takes off all of his clothes, and gets pissed drunk. Nice. And God's yeah. like, oh my God, this is the one human I chose to save. Fuck! Who I chose wouldn't? the alcoholic. And that's why Christians are alcoholic. Uh, I didn't know this story. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> rainbows, a rainbow is a meteorologic, a meteor, no, I'm going to skip that meteor. word. It is a phenomenon <laughs> caused by caused by reflection, refraction, and dispersion of light in water droplets, resulting in a spectrum of light appearing in the sky. It's so complicated. I yeah, can never right. Make a rainbow. Rainbows caused by sunlight always appear in the section of the sky directly opposite of the sun. Wild. I didn't know they were this consistent. R- yeah, of me a, neither. Of a meteorological phenomenon. Uh, oh, fuck. Okay, you just said it. I guess I'm not gonna <laughs> cut out me fucking it up then. Uh, rainbows can be full circles. However, the observer normally only sees an arc formed by illuminated droplets above the ground. Oh, okay. So, so it's kind telling- of like- no, wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me a rainbow could go all the way around the world? Like, one big circle? Or am I thinking about it a little too hard? Um... No, but now I want that to be a thing. I don't care if it's possible. What's appearing in my head here- is the rain and like water droplets in the sky that are just in that space in the sky uh it the, the sun is reflecting off of those water droplets and creating like the circle of light so it would be it would yeah. it's only like exhibited within the rain cloud yes but, but hypothetically it, if there was a rain cloud that was large enough and expansive enough to cover the whole earth could we have a entire circular rainbow um, the sun would have to be in the right spot, but I'm gonna say yes. I have no justification for saying it, but yes. <laughs> that makes me happy. Good. All these other planets with their rings, with their little floating rocks, we will have the best ring available to modern Rainbow. science. <laughs> create a- hey, now we- we must now fund a doomsday device that will create a rain cloud large enough to make a rainbow around the world. Check out our gum fund me. <laughs> this is really off topic, but hey, that's the point of this podcast. So um, that made me think of there's this Disney Channel original movie that I cannot think of the name of. Mm-hmm. But it includes a weather machine like this girl has this little weather machine. It's like out on her little like in her flower box. And she literally starts controlling the weather because she makes it fucking snow and they're like in Florida or something because the movie like part of it takes place around Christmas and they make it snow and everyone's like, what the fuck? Jeez. Honestly, I think if it snowed in Florida, there would just be mass terror. <gasps> okay, so I typed in decom weather and literally it auto corrected to decom weather machine. It is the ultimate Christmas present from 2000. And uh, it is a girl steals a weather machine from Santa Claus to make a snow day. The machine breaks and causes an out-of-control snowstorm. I like how it's called the ultimate Christmas present when she right? really steals it. What kind of a gift is that? That is like an anti-gift for Santa Claus. I think the ultimate Christmas yeah. present is that it breaks. I think oh, the ultimate Christmas thought. present is that the best uh, is, is giving. The gift of giving. No, that can't be it. Oh, shit, you're right. (laughs) It's gotta be theft. Okay, you're right. (laughs) It is on the list of one of the 12 best Disney Channel original movies. It's best? Oh, it is listed as number one. This is the best one. One second. Oh, no. Well, unless she labeled them 1 to 12 
in ascending order. And in that case, the top ranking for Bustle's 12 best Disney movies would be a full court miracle from 2003, which is a basketball Hanukkah movie, which is both heartwarming and thrilling, apparently. Full court miracle. Yeah, explain to me this Jewish basketball movie. I mean, I guess that does make sense because there are a lot of famous Jewish basketball players. Are there? Um, are they, they were kind of the yeah. They were kind of the OG like good basketball players. Has a forty-five percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Really? I so wonder what the do you, ultimate do you Christmas think? Present do has. you think that it's it's numbered the other way, Ben? I do because the ultimate Christmas present. Let's see. What's the Rotten Tomatoes score? Tomatoes. Don't say. I'm gonna that. start calling it Rotten Tomatoes. I just said don't though. Rotten Tomatoes. <sighs> so they can't uh, sue us. Why would they sue us? I don't know. Why did we do to them? Uh, they only have a 49%. Well, 49's higher than 45. I still find it very hard to believe that the 12 best Disney Channel And uh, as far as critics' consensus on the ultimate Christmas present, there is no consensus yet. That is literally <laughs> what it says on the, the Rotten Tomatoes website. I wholeheartedly believe this. Oh, oh my God. <sighs> Well, I don't think there can be a consensus on Disney Channel original movies. Like, that that stuff has a very unique flavor to it that's, like... It's probably spiritually similar to, like, mall court food. Yeah, it's like... You 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 either gotta be desperate or nostalgic here. <laughs> so, I guess it is holiday season. Oh. Um, we kind of mentioned that Christmas movie. And that made me think, what are the worst holiday movies of all time? The worst holiday movies. The first list says... Like literally includes Daddy's Home too. That I, is a slap in the mm, face. Nice, Daddy's Home <laughs> too. I mean, I do think that movie kind of sucks. Oh, I mean, I, I and they revolve so. around two dads fighting over who their kids Custody love. Custody of children. So, yeah, weird. it like I I understand why parts of it are funny, but I'm like the whole plot. I'm like this just seems really fucked up because so many people go through this. <laughs> like um, there are too many people that are divorced that you can't like assume that this isn't like there are too many people that i'm sure watched that movie and thought this is too real bye (laughs) so cutting back to rainbows oh boy mathematical derive no no please are you sure you want to cut back to rainbows on that no there's a fucking equation there's an equation Mm -mm. nope never mind we're moving on to something else sorry (laughs) You were all right, what about best math? holiday movies of all time? This isn't a learn along with me. Best holiday movies of all time. Like, yeah. what would you guys say is your number one? Like, what's your holiday movie that you watch every year? Ah, uh, um, forget the name. The I'm... Year Without a Santa Claus. Huh. Really? Every okay. year. Every year. Snow Miser. Heat Miser. The little bastard. No, that Santa Claus is shit. coming to town. No, I'm Santa looking Claus up The Year town. Without a Santa Claus. Yep. Yeah, it's set from 1974. Wow. What am I thinking of? I don't. Uh, y- there's other. I mean, Rudolph the Shiny New Year. I mean, they, they've well, got Santa a. Santa Claus is coming to town. Is the 1970 movie with Heat Miser and Snow Miser? Okay. I th- well, oh, I think what? this is. I think this this is the one that's like centrally focused on them. Okay, because the one I watched had like baby Santa, like when Santa Claus was a baby, and he grew up, and he was this like really creepy ginger puppet. Kind of looks like the elf on a shelf. Oh jeez. Oh, God. I'm looking it up now. He kinda looks and like that this song. Bastard kid. He had this song called uh put one foot in front of the other. It's great. You know what's really cursed? It's to look <laughs> on a cast list at somebody's IMDB and just see a photo of this random ass claymation doll being their IMDB photo that represents them from nineteen seventy five. That's them. They haven't changed since. Uh, are they the doll? Ron, they were the doll all along. Ron Marshall? Are you a doll? Ron Marshall? I've got to see this. So, well, oh, Mason, no. what's your favorite holiday movie? Who, me? Yeah. Um, Nightmare Before Christmas is cool, and I used to have to watch um, Christmas Vacation with my family uh, every mm. year around Christmas time. Um, but I don't know. Not 
Like you're just not. I mean, hey, some people aren't holiday movie people. I but. just have some hangups with the holiday itself. Is all it's just kind of hard for me. So I just I don't know. I guess I don't really have a tradition at the, at this very moment. Oh, uh, fair. My only tradition is every year my dad and I drive out the Christmas tree farm and we bring back a whole dead tree that we get to pretend is alive for an entire month. That is That's, my tradition. I've always found that really weird. And I know there is a lot of people, like a lot of people prefer to buy real trees. But we have always been fake tree people in my home. And it just, like, when you grow up like that, it just makes sense. You're like, you just buy the one tree and then you can reuse it. And you don't have to, like, you, you worry have to about t- a nasty-ass tree rotting in your <laughs> living room. You don't even have to take the ornaments off if you don't want to. I mean, you should, though, if you have as many as we do. Eh, fair. Oh, no, no my family's like, my family's from Russia. We want every excuse to celebrate the Russian culture. And that means putting up one tree that vaguely resembles a Russian tree. And then we put all of our ornaments on it. And half the time it's like, uh, here's Christy in fifth grade. And she's making a stupid little face at the camera, but her teacher made her make it into an ornament. Or... Here's this tiny Soviet character from your youth. They're going on the tree. That's where they belong. Um, it's just shit like that. That's fair because, like, in the American sense, it's the exact same way. It's like, okay, so here's all of the, like, sentimental ornaments of Baby's First Christmas and all that shit. And then here's a bunch of, like, we have, as since it's me and my sister, we have a fuck ton of Barbie holiday ornaments and Madame oh, Alexander man. doll ornaments. I have an excessive amount, like, I like to have, like, movie-themed ornaments and stuff like that. Um, So, like, a lot of the ones my grandmother has bought me were movie-themed. But, yeah, it's pretty much just, like, a shrine to Christmas and pop culture. Yeah. (laughs) You know? There's always that aspect of it. You can't get away from it unless you don't get a tree. I just, I love the way the tree, like, when you turn out all the lights, but you just put the tree on. Yeah, that's nice. It's a nice feeling. You just want to sit there. I love, like, leaving it on all night, and then, like, I'm coming downstairs at midnight for my nightly midnight snack, and I see the tree Uh all lit up, and I feel Uh a little bit better about myself for the brief moments that I'm going downstairs to become a slug. Yeah. shit like that. Yeah, I I agree. (laughs) See, it's the little things. It's just like, wow, we can all pretend to be happy for a month, and that's nice. In one brief moment, I even am happy. Yes. Oh, interesting. Sorry, I'm just browsing Christmas movies, and there's <laughs> one called Santa Girl, and the female lead is the girl that played Harper in Wizards of Waverly Place. What? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. that is her. It came out in 2019. Santa oh, Claus's God. only daughter jets off to college before she is forced to marry the son of Jack Frost and take over the family business. This looks like I don't a like that movie. Santa Claus is being portrayed as willing to set up his child in an arranged marriage. That makes yeah. me sad. I think Santa Claus would be like, you marry who makes you happy, baby girl. And also, like her Santa name is Cassie Claus. Are you kidding oh, me? Oh, no. Get the fuck out. Everything about this hurts. Could have done a better <laughs> job naming her. Even the way Santa Claus looks, he's got like this sort of like, this smug, like, his beard is way too tiny. He looks like a suburban dad dressed up in a Santa suit. Somebody in the, one of the, wow, somebody said bland holiday rom-com has some bullying and drinking. Has Never some bullying? Um, yeah, what? I don't know. Well, now I'm about. interested. Wait. Oh, they've got the dude from Ned's Declassified in it. Oh, <gasps> you're right. Devin Werkheiser. He was Ned. This is, he's Ooh. a cutie. I tell you what. I did have a big fat crush on him for a while there, because I'd, I'd watch Nets of Class Fight all the time. I assume yeah. he's who she wants to marry. I can relate. I guess, yeah. Shit, now I want to watch Nets of oh. Class Fight. Hey, okay, but on the other side, classified. the Google reviews, it's a 60% of people like the movie, and a, like, a lot of them are saying, wow, I love this. I watched it five times already. Five uh, times? Absolutely adorable. A cute new Christmas romance. It's mildly predictable, but I mean... Come on, aren't all Christmas movies... I don't know, it looks like a Hallmark movie if it was cast by just purely Disney types. Could you imagine, like, how fucking blown away you'd be if if a, if a Christmas movie actually, like, had a fucking, like, crazy twist to it? 
like some crazy ass shit like they really just went off the fucking everyday hallmark script like it just once everyone everyone's just so used to it that like i it would blow the, it would blow everyone's minds it, i don't even think it'd even have to be a good movie I mean, like, The Nightmare Before Christmas was absolutely an off-the-rails sort of Christmas movie, and I do love that movie. Yeah, but that was from, like, 2003. It's been so oh, we long. we need more. We need another. We need another one. I need... Jack Skellington has spent his his fair share of time in Hot Topic. I think we need a new edgy Christmas character. New goth mascot. We need a new goth Christmas mascot. Well, yeah, because I'll be honest, I love Nightmare Before Christmas. It was a holiday movie for me, too, but I can only own so much Nightmare Before Christmas stuff before I'm like, please don't make me one of those people. You know the people I'm talking about. The Do people I? that literally like wear Jack Skellington jackets. They have a Jack Skellington-themed tattoo. And I mean, I'm no hate. It's just like I don't want to be consumed by the aesthetic of Jack Skellington. It, I mean, it is not my aesthetic personally. You know, and yeah. if I continue to get gifts in that range, I, it's gonna happen. Is it like how I keep receiving Sonic-related gifts, and now it looks like I'm a weird fucking Sonic guy because I fucking own all of these things that I don't want? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Except, I mean, I kind of want them, and I kind of am the tim burton gal but i don't i don't want to be labeled that right now i have wake of tim burton's current foolishness but that's yeah that's that's another subject i I own do not have the time or energy to delve into i own four sonic shot glasses one giant sonic mug one sonic pint glass two sonic stuffed animals i I mean i'm not (laughs) To be fair, I always want to use the Sonic mug when I'm over there, so... And I mean, that will be delightful when I live Honestly, with Honestly, it's it's the size of a beer stein. Collection. Yeah. Yeah, no, it'll... Yeah, I you'll, like my coffee cup. It'll actually get used. Just so you know, it's not dishwasher safe. It'll it'll peel off if you do that. You gotta hand wash it after you're done. Sonic is... Are you, are you fast, lecturing me about hard. hand washing right now? Or hand washing the cup right now? Well, no, I'm just letting you know when you use it in the future... <laughs> It's it's not dish it's not dishwasher safe. Sonic can't outrun the suds. No, he can't. He's just fragile. He needs the gentle touch of your hands and not the harsh hands of the dishwasher. Exactly. He doesn't like it rough. He doesn't like the hands of a machine. I mean, we see that in his games. He's very against robots and all forms of AI. Yeah. So it's like a trust yeah. thing. <laughs> it's a trust thing. Just can't trust robots. That's robophobic. You're this right. It's like Blade Runner, but if it was just Sonic living his normal life. Damn. Hey. The whole themes of Blade Runner. Turns out Sonic was just off screen. <laughs> Sonic and his mammal friends are and his animal friends are just in another place. In Blade oh, Runner. It's it's one full. Robotnik, he just he just ran away from that society, kinda like Harrison Ford did in the second one. <laughs> He was Harrison Ford. That was him all along. It was it, Dr. Robotnik is Harrison Ford. You're right. There we go. New conspiracy theory. Let's new, go. You say new. I'm going to look it up. It'll be a thing. It better not be old. <laughs> They've already talked it out. They've already hashed it out. Is, is Dr. Ro... Okay, no, this is just shit about Jim Carrey. Never mind. This is not fun. Well, hey, then there we go. It is a new conspiracy theory. That's so. our new conspiracy now. Like the uh, the birds aren't real conspiracy. Monetize that. Put it all on shirts. Can make a. I mean, what are you about talking about? Birds aren't real. Jim Carrey <laughs> stole the role from Harrison Ford and ruined the continuity of this of this film franchise. There you go. Exactly, it's that. <laughs> so I did find one other interesting thing from the Rainbows page, and it's a thing called a monochrome or a red rainbow, and it's what? and that it's that sounds terrifying. It is, and it's. And it's really rare. It is an optical phenomenon with uh, and a rare variation uh, of uh, of the more common multicolor rainbow. It is uh, its formation process is identical, but the difference being that a monochrome rainbow requires the sun to be close to the horizon near sunrise or sunset. The low angle of the sun results in longer distance uh, uh, for its light to travel through the atmosphere, causing shorter wavelengths of light. Uh, such as blue, green, and yellow, to be scattered, leaving only red. 
crazy. Oh. So, so it's, it's like this red. It look. It looks so- like a blood moon. <laughs> Jesus. It's fucking crazy looking. Um, I want everybody who's listening to the tail end of this podcast uh, to stop what you're doing right now and look up a red rainbow because it is scary and you need to prepare yourself. Like I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It looks like one of those like glass domes from The Simpsons or just like any terrifying sci-fi disaster movie. There's Mr. Burns standing under it cackling. Yeah, yes. he's under the red rainbow. He'd be there. Man, that's crazy. I'm just trying to be trapped under a red rainbow dome. Yeah, I would love you know, to witness that. I would also love to witness that at some point in my like life, I feel like I could be reborn like a phoenix from an ashes under a red rainbow, you know? And maybe that's putting a lot of pressure on the rainbow itself, but... Well, I guess what, what must be hard about it is it has to be like a clearing sky from like a rainstorm. Like, right at sunrise. I, I, hmm. I see why that timing is so hard. Interesting. I'd be satisfied with even a non-red rainbow. Honestly, at this point, it's been so long. <laughs> Make me happy to see it. Right. I know a lot of people were going on about, like, the eclipse. Like, the crappy little eclipse that was, I think, like, a week ago. Wow, I don't people even know if were staying up until 4 a.m. to see that, and it was <sighs> just, like half of an eclipse not even a full eclipse you know we all got to occupy ourselves somehow (laughs) my mom gets really excited about those things she's like go look at the moon tonight and i'm like what and it's not even for like i wish it was for witchy reasons but it's not it's just like genuinely just go look at it i mean that's the best reason for me to look at anything I mean, I just like staring at the sky anyway, so if there's something pretty up there too, that's tight. How long uh, have we been recording? Um, It's hard to tell on OBS, but we started this call at 9.30, Aubrey, and she joined about like 15 minutes after. So, like hmm, we could actually do now if you wanted to. Oh. Chris. Before you get out of here, would you like to partake in a... Oh, yes. A hot and spicy deal. A hot and spicy deal. Deal. We did, uh, so before uh, we let you go, uh, Aubrey and I are going to separately think of a, th- of a task and a price point for the task, and then we're going to throw them both out at the same time, and you're going to have to tell us whether or not you think you'd, will- you'd be willing. Mm. You don't have to act, this is just a hypothetical. But, like, if I did it, would you pay me? Um, I don't know. Sure. Like, like, like what if it was something I would do? That's the real question. Um, we'd have to get it for the social media. You know what? You've come up with a really good idea once we actually have enough people watching to consider that. (laughs) All Um, right. What we'll we'll think about it because I I don't I don't know if I'm if I actually have enough money to pay you depending on what we say. All um, right, I will hold off. So, do you want to come up with the price then? Um, um, okay. <laughs> Wait, which one of us did what I'm last time? Usual, I'm usually all over the place with my prices, so I could okay. really dig Mason in a deep hole there. Um, okay. I did not expect mm. this. Uh, I'm scared. I'll do price. Okay. Uh, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> as ready as I'll ever be. Would you? Draw Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump in the nude, like a full realistic portrait. Four. No. No. <laughs> 300 smackaroos. For 300? Fuck, I'd draw him having sex. That's... Let's go. That was Top it up. $300? I wanted a low baller yes, with that one. Yes, I know. That's the issue. <laughs> That's the problem. Why would you? She would obviously do that. I. That's the word right that was. Hey, I picked mine before you picked, dude. I like. I. I was just. You know. I'm just the word. That's the first. That's. You know. That's. That's what came to my head. You could try seeing how low I'd go, but I warn you, it'd be pretty fucking low. Um, <laughs> I was gonna go like five dollars. Five dollars. Okay. And I want them. I want them like cuddling in a heart shaped bed. Well, for $5, okay. I wouldn't. See? But yeah. I wouldn't do anything for $5. Really? No. 
Nothing? I'm, I'm not do anything for five dollars. Okay, maybe if it was like if it took me like five seconds, then I would do it for five dollars. Okay, fine then. Never mind then. Super businessy deal. Fifteen dollars. <laughs> Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. Does it have to be a good drawing? Like, does it have to have any semblance of quality? Oh yeah, I did. I did say it has to be a realistic style drawing. Oh fuck. So I well, did. I did stipulate that. Well then, um, how about? Well, oof. Are, are are we just gonna keep naming up prices are until we, we until we create an actual deal for her to her, for us to draw this for her to draw this? I for don't. Us? I don't want this. I don't really want this. I dislike both of those <laughs> immensely. Okay, well, my next one was going to be 35 to 45 because I was really willing to make this work, but apparently Aubrey doesn't want this drawing of Trump anymore. Well, and but at Giuliani. the same time, it would make a delightful piece of merch. <laughs> <laughs> what? It? Let's see, if y'all get rich and famous, then I would do it for 5% of sales. If y'all, if we get rich and famous, all right. If we get rich and famous, I will commission it for from you for three thousand dollars. Oh, okay. I'll I'll take that then. But the five percent of t-shirt sales might be more than that, depending on how famous we are. Just saying. Wait, shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Wait, um, five. I didn't know how much or three thousand dollars, whichever's higher. Um, there we go. Um. Also, just want to say here. Uh, we did mention that Christy was involved with the H Man WP squad, and from their PR guy, he says, "Direct quote: Christy is sole property of H Man WP Studios." Who the fuck said that? Uh, so <laughs> dox him. I think Campfire Song is Chris, right? Well, ah, yeah, but you're gonna have to Chris. <laughs> don't dox that. Sadly, we that <laughs> sorry guys, we won't be stealing her uh anytime soon, but. For now. Please steal me. I need... I am mismanaged. Aren't we all? <laughs> Where is my own personal podcast? Where shit. I just, like, tell people to tell me stupid shit to do and I do it. You know yeah. what? This has been a hell of a lot of fun. I'm really glad that we were able to get you on here today. I'm glad yeah. to have been able to be here. Yeah. This is, um... Be sure to... Oh, do you want to do your own, uh... Um, signal boosting stuff here, or uh, I can signal boost. Okay, I'm I'll... I'm a vessel for capitalist enterprise. Get up there, then <laughs> take your soapbox. Okay, um, I'm one of the people in the H Man WP streaming crew. Uh, if you'd like to check them out, they're H Man WP on uh, I believe it's YouTube. It's YT H Man WP on Instagram and Twitter, I believe. Unless I'm wrong. Um, I don't know. Either way, look up H Man WP and push the fucking like, follow, subscribe, every button that you possibly can. Push all of them. Nice. And then give me clout while you're at it. Blocked yes. and reported. Please do. <laughs> um, and yeah, nice. Uh, did you have any personal stuff you wanted to? Uh, no. I see clout as a as a sort of like communist spreading a joy, not really like a personal clout chasing. Hey, I feel that. Uh, I also uh, don't really have anything to to plug. <laughs> I definitely feel that too. Uh, this is my only thing. So anyway, this has been a treat. And to uh, to wrap this up, uh, I just want to say thank y'all for listening. Uh, it's great to... I mean, it's always great to have y'all. <sighs> it's... I don't know. I guess a lot of us are feeling the the christmas vibes but you know to all of you that are not feeling the christmas vibes right now uh i feel you you're not alone and you, you know what we're it's only a month away it's only one month we're almost there you got this wait shit we gotta say something funny we don't usually end it serious aubrey we end it serious uh aubrey aubrey about christmas you should just listen to mariah carey no that's not uh, funny that's not funny you're doing it bad you're gonna get us fucking canceled